Now this is a big one. This is really important for parenting especially, but in any relationship. Okay, there's dependent, dependency, and then codependency. And a lot of people use this word and don't have a clue as to what they're talking about. Are well, you really codependent? I mean, they'll use, they throw those labels around. And I say, so what does codependent mean to you? Well, I don't know. <laughs> so let's define it. Okay, what is codependency? Does anybody know? Yeah, but it's different. It's the, yeah, that's true, but there are different roles. The codependent plays a totally different role than the dependent. Enabling What's that mean? That's another word. Well, you take side. It can be with the bad behavior. Like someone says, no, that doesn't exist. And you know it does, but you'll agree with them. You'll be codependent. Okay. Enabling means no consequences. It means not providing consequences. <laughs> you keep... And you're allowing, in a sense, the behaviors that you don't like. So what's codependent? Don't know. Okay, good. <laughs> it means taking responsibility for another adult in any way whatsoever. Taking responsibility for another adult. That's codependency. That's really messed up. Now that's different, than, that's not saying you don't care. I can care a whole lot, but I'm not responsible. The minute I become responsible, I've crossed the line. And I'm no longer helping them, I'm screwing them up. Because I'm enabling them to stay in that dependent place. Now, responsibility for children is totally appropriate. I was responsible for two girls for a long time, in every way whatsoever. But an adult? Uh-uh. And that's the hard part as a parent, because I've been through it, that transition between being responsible and letting go of responsibility to where I'm not fixing and taking care of anything for them. Because if I do that, I'm crippling them, and they will be dependent on me forever. I don't want that. Go away. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> You get that? I'll give you a, a, a true story. I mean, I have pictures to document it. <laughs> I'm not going to show you the pictures. I was at Big Sur with my two daughters. They came to visit from San Francisco. And you know how they, you know, they, well, come on, we got to go. We're always in a hurry. And they get there. And so we spend the night. And then in the morning, we get up to go to breakfast. And they notice that the Jeep had a flat tire. I said, Dad, it's got a flat tire. You got to fix it because we got to meet up with our friends in the city. We got to go now. So, well, I don't eat breakfast yet. <laughs> I'm going to eat first. Take care of myself, okay? Is that all right with you? Yeah. All right, okay. <laughs> so we go eat, and then we come. And, of course, that gave me time to think. <laughs> and I had this thought out. I said, okay, yeah. So what are we going to do? Dad, fix the tire. No, I'm going to watch you fix the tire. Okay, you both have college degrees. There's a manual in the glove compartment. The jack's right there. I'm going to sit down here and watch you guys do that. What? We got to go. I, I can't mess up my nails or get all screwed up and everything. And I said, what would you do if I wasn't here? We'd call AAA. Well, they, you can't call here. There's no cell phones. They're not coming here. Well, and they get mad. And for 45 minutes, I watched them slam around. And I took pictures. You know. <laughs> <laughs> they were really pissed. But they learned how to change a tire for the first time. See, I did not enable their dependency on me. Now, as a father, that's really it was hard because, you know, I really like want to pick them up and make it go, oh, daddy, you're so wonderful, right? Nope, I'll let you be pissed off at me. You'll you appreciate it later. And I'm getting tired of doing this picking up stuff. So you get the idea? Some people never, parents don't ever do that. They keep picking them up, 35 years old, still doing it. And they say it's because I care. Uh-uh. That's not caring, that's hurting. When you love somebody, you need to let them be on the ground. Don't pick them up. They got to get up. It's hard. But you're doing them a gift, a favor. Unless you want them strung out on you for life. Bank of dads closed. <laughs> Interest only loans. <laughs> no gifts. <laughs> nope. I guess some people call that tough love. That's another buzzword for it. 
Now, what do you get out of doing this? Because everything has a payoff to me. Always look at the payoffs. What does someone get out of being codependent? If you're responsible for another adult, what's that imply? Power. Power. What's that imply? The other has no power. If you're responsible for something, what does that mean? What position is that? Control. Control. So what are you trying to control? Security. Because they're not going to leave you. Because they need you. So you don't have to worry about fear of being alone. You don't have to worry about abandonment. It's just like keeping them strung out. Now, a codependent person would never say that. They don't, they're not thinking this. But that's the payoff to me. Because to let them go means they can just take off on their own. They don't need you. Also, it's a great drug. When you get caught up in other people's lives and all their drama and crises, you never have time to think about your own. It's like me all day, you know? Eight hours, I'm into other people's lives. I don't even think about me until I'm, I'm driving home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that whole time, I'm into their stuff. It's like, but some people do this and they don't get paid. It's not a career. They have friends that are always in drama. And, you know, they, they complain about it, but they keep doing it. But when you are rescuing somebody, as I call it, codependent, they usually get pissed off. You're usually an angry person. It's like, you start off nice, let me help you, let me, but then it's like, you know, I'm really getting sick and tired of you having to take care of you. You know, you're really a pain in the ass. And so you start getting mean and nasty. So you end up being angry at them. But the dependent stays dependent. One thing that I like that I learned before I ever heard that word codependent was the difference between helping somebody and rescuing them. Do you know the difference? Okay, rescuing them is that you are kind of like robbing them of learning how to do something. You're always doing it for them. And if you weren't there, they would be helpless. Helping somebody is doing it for them, but if you weren't there, they could do it. It's like... Uh, be some, you know, um, like teaching my wife how to program the DVR thing. So if I'm out of town and I'm not there, she knows how to record a program. So, but if I'm home, then I'll do it because I know she could do it if I wasn't there. That makes sense? It's like the, the tire example. If I did it for them, I'd be rescuing them. I wouldn't help them at all. That's a hard one for people to get. So you understand now, I can be really there for somebody, really empathetic, I can't be responsible. So if one of my daughters is crying to me on the phone about how awful something is and there's no decent men in San Francisco and I'm so lonely and, you know, it's like ripping my heart out, right? Listen to this, like, ugh. But I can't go and set her up with somebody. I can't go and do that. That would be rescue. That would be taking it on. I can be there and listen. Yeah, it sucks, Michelle. I can see what you're saying. Yeah, Dad. That's caring. That's being there. Get the difference? Okay. Because a lot of people think if you care, you got to do something. Right, men? Men are real big on that one. You got to do something. What if, what if you can't do anything? Well, I can't hear it then. <laughs> see, I want to learn to be there without having to do something. That's a big distinction.